Hello, hello and welcome back again, continuing our series about the Fang and this one is going to be Amazon. Now, would I have liked to own Amazon? I don't own Amazon at the moment. Would I have liked to own that? Yeah, no doubt about it, especially a few years ago. But what about now? The thing is, when we're examining these kinds of companies like uh, Amazon, for instance, you always have to remember that this is a retailer, practically speaking. And um, it has come off of its lows in regards to its stock price because of uh, hype. So uh, people really, really like the company. Uh, the, the company was doing well. It's not like they were not doing well. They're doing great. They are top a top retailer pretty much in the US. But the thing is, when uh, the news about Amazon doing great um, are known to people, then, you know, traders and people like investors uh, tend to disproportionately buy the stock. And they don't really think about what they are buying and what, at what cost they are buying. Because you have to remember that when you are buying a stock, it's not only about the, what the company you are buying, but it's about how much the company is for, how much it's selling for. And uh, this is in its market cap. So right now, the market cap of uh, Amazon, as you'll see here in our tool, is about $1.4 billion, trillion dollars. And um, indicating that the company is pretty, pretty expensive. And when you're looking at these values, this would imply that the company is generating tons of billions, right? Otherwise, why would it be worth $1.4 trillion um, for the whole company? So when you're buying a company, typically you want it to be generating good enough money for its value. So if I'm willing to sell you a company for 100 bucks, it better be generating like 20 or 30 or even more dollars a year. Otherwise, why would I buy it if it generates one dollar? It makes no sense. I will never get my money back. But the thing is, investors get hyped into buying these kinds of companies in some situations because they are doing great, because they are hearing about them in the news, because Kramer and all these people talk about them. And for good reason, these are good companies. Uh, but these get pushed. The thing is, as um, hopefully smart investors, we want to be examining whether these companies are a buy compared to what they are doing in regards to their financials. So we start off with uh, the peer ratio of the company, which is sitting at 102 right now, which is super, super expensive, uh, even for a pretty much tech company, if you want to say so, like Amazon is. And um, it has been in the negatives as well. And we do know that Amazon is overspending and spending a ton uh, also in capital expenditures for producing like new uh, establishments, for example, new warehouses and things of that sort. So they're growing at a tremendous pace. It's a known thing. But we can still evaluate what the company is doing in regards to their revenue, for instance, and their net income. And then we do know about the cash flow being less. But we can get a sense of what the company is worth today and whether this kind of price is uh, the price that uh, makes sense for us to be buying $130 about. Now, if we take it back to five years, uh, you will notice that at some point the company was close to like 80 over here, for instance, like 76. And this is definitely a, a better price. Now, that doesn't mean that 130 is expensive today because it has to be um, associated with how much the company generates. Now, remember, this was like back in 2019. So it could still be cheap for uh, what it is right now. We will know about this when we examine the finances, of course. But the outstanding sales of the company are going up. And it's always, when we're talking about these huge companies, it's always a sign that the company may be overvalued because if you are the board, if you are part of the board of a company of that sort, when are you selling the stock? When are you issuing shares? When the stock is expensive. If the stock is cheap, you are buying back shares. You are not going to be issuing shares. It doesn't make sense. But if it's expensive, you want people to be buying it because actually it gives you cheap capital for the sake of your shares, that is. So you are, you are creating shares that are too expensive for the common public, pretty much, for the public, but they are cheap for you because you are getting a lot of money out of them compared to your financials. So as a as part of the board, as a member of the board, I would definitely be selling when the stock price is uh, super high for the stock, for the company. Now, uh, we cannot really deduce the, the liabilities compared to the free cash flow of the company because we do know that the company has been doing it that on purpose. And also these numbers here, like the net income growth and the free cash flow growth, again, affected by the growth of uh, Amazon, for sure. Um, you know, it's not only the employees, it's the establishment, it's everything. They do it that on purpose in order to grow. And so it becomes a little bit of a higher challenge to actually evaluate a company of this sort. Now, the, the bad thing about a company like Amazon is their margins, uh, a retailer. So retailers, because they are selling physical products, uh, they tend to, be, to make lower margins. And you may be asking why. There are multiple reasons for this. Uh, first of all, competition, like selling um, you know, things of that sort. You have to be cheap for the most part, unless you are selling some products that are you know, one of a kind. 
and people are willing to pay the extra price for them. Typically, when you're buying, I don't know, like kitchenware and things of that sort off of Amazon, they will be the most expensive, the most, the most cheap, the cheapest ones that you're going to be getting around. Otherwise, you're not going to be buying them. And uh, so uh, there is going to be also some expensive in regards to uh, maybe uh, their, uh, you know, their establishments, uh, their employees, their employees. And um, the brick and mortar, pretty much their warehouses, they're, all these things have tons of costs. And this is why the margins tend to be down. And also marketing, for example, is another thing, like you, the way you're marketing your products. Now, they are making money out of um, Amazon ads because Amazon is selling ads to their sellers as well. So they are making money off of that too. But even with that, their margins are still low. So you can understand how, how fiercely competitive a company of this sort is. But they have done tremendously well, and they're right now the number one in the US, and um, a company definitely that's worthwhile noting and potentially buying at a cheap price for sure. But some things to note here in regards to how much money that they are generating and how much of that is actually net income, right? Okay, so their financial statements, taking, taking it back to uh, our income statement, you will see they started with $75 billion and grew to $514 billion. So their growth has been out of this world. From $75 billion to $500 billion, half a trillion, insane growth. And remember, we're talking about billions already. So they started with $75 billion. It's not easy to start with $75 billion and move to almost half a trillion. It's not easy at all. It takes a special kind of skill to do that for a company of that sort especially a retailer, <laughs> no doubt about that. So they are doing tremendously well in regards to their numbers here. Net income used to be 274 million and right now they are losing money even, even after making money uh, in the previous year. So again, it is a company uh, for which these things can happen, probably not going to be happening for a long while, but you could be seeing some declines uh, for companies of this sort. Um, for multiple reasons, really, especially, for instance, if we're talking about uh, pandemic years, they could be uh, having extra costs, cutting down on their profits uh, uh, for this reason. There could be multiple reasons why they are doing that. Also, as you'll see here, they spend a lot of risk on, on research and development, for instance, compared to the previous year. They keep spending more and more over here. You can dig, dig down uh, their expenses over here and see exactly what uh, has been happening for their operating expenses, but you can see the massive increase. Uh, it used to be four billion at some point, right now it's fifty-five. So a massive increase in operating uh, expenses uh, for the company. So massive increase in costs. And the balance of the company, again, we can take it back to five to ten years and just examine the total equity here. Of course, all our patrons in our tool can examine all these uh, values in further detail. In this video, would be taking would be like an hour if I went through everything over here. But you will see that the company has been uh, issuing shares and making quite a lot of money out of these shares, out of issuing stock. Understandably so, is what I talked about earlier. And the total equity started with 10 billion, like 10 years ago, 2013. And right now it's sitting at 146 billion. So you can see that the increase has been tremendous here for the company, even with the additional paid in capital coming off of uh, issued shares. It's still, they're still doing great, but they're also increasing their total debt, as you'll see at a tremendous uh, rate too. So increasing liabilities as well. Now, the cash flow statement is um, a story that you would expect. Now, the net income is obviously low because of the expenses. Now, when adjusted for um, the stock-based compensation, which is tremendous because these companies, like Bay Area companies, for instance, or the big ones, uh, do pay a lot, of, a lot in stock, especially executives and their employees too, the core employees. And depreciation and amortization because, you know, they have tons of buildings and things of that sort, so these things depreciate, so they lose value. And this, are, this is not cash, so it gets added back to cash because it's an expense from net income, so it's extracted from net income, but then it's getting added back to their uh, operating cash flow, taking it back up to $55 billion. And then, then you have the insane capital expenditures that the company has because they have been growing with, uh, in regards to their establishments. And uh, you will see here investments in property, plant and equipment are pretty much the core of it, as you would expect, $63 billion. <laughs> And this is generally speaking a good sign because the company is um, pretty much um, upgrading and it's actually increasing their core space, uh, doing better. And uh, yeah, as a shareholder, I'm, I don't really have much of a problem with this one. It's, uh, you know, if the company can actually justify the fact that they're spending tons in property, plant and equipment, which for Amazon probably makes sense, then it uh, makes a ton of sense uh, to me. In regards to free cash flow, negative right now. 
Again, that's what happens when you have tons of capital expenditures, but you have to remember that their operating cash flow was uh, very positive here, sitting at about $55 billion. So it gets, uh, it gets adjusted because of uh, the insane capital expenditures. But this is a case where you really need to keep in mind what is going on here with the operating cash flow. Very important. And uh, remember, this was a 1.5 almost, 1.4 almost, pretty much trillion dollar company, right? So it is expensive to begin with. But how expensive now? Our discounted cash flow model can tell us a few things about it. So the revenue growth of the company has been achieving for the most part uh, has been pretty high, really high, apart from like last year. And so when we are growing at uh, $500 billion, 20% <laughs> increase is like $100 billion. Like it's insane. It's a lot of money. So I'm not going to go that high. I don't think this is uh, easily achievable for the next five years. N nowhere near that. So I will go maybe maybe like 8%, 9 and 10 here. I want to be a little bit conservative and maybe these values are not even conservative, that much conservative, frankly. And um, net income margin, the big problem with uh, a company like Amazon, I think that I talked about earlier. I'm going to go 3, 3.5 and 4 for Amazon. And again, you can see the net income margins. Last year was actually negative and uh, the average is about 4%. And free cash flow margin, big, big troubles here because their free cash flow margin gets uh, destroyed by their capital expenditures, understandably so. I'm going to use the typical 80, 90, and 100 just to simulate what is happening when the, the actual net income translates to direct free cash flow, which is fairly typical for companies. I mean, companies who at least do not spend that much in capital expenditures. So 13% for the annual return, and I hit calculate. And so, with this kind of revenue growth margins and um, everything over here, you will see that the company stock price is really, really expensive uh, for what it is. Now, you could be going higher, for instance, in revenue growth, expecting the company to keep growing at a tremendous pace, like near 20%. And if we do that, let's just say that we go 13, uh, 15, 17, we are, uh, we are thinking that the company will keep growing at a tremendous pace. And we can calculate out of this one. And we are still sitting at like 40, 54, 54 here. Uh, for high estimates. So it's going to be tough, uh, you know, to be paying $130 for Amazon, frankly. It's really, really expensive. It's a pro big, big problem for the company. And um, you may be thinking, okay, 50 is never going to happen. But again, if you take it back, remember, it was almost 80 at some point. It was potentially even less than 80. So at some point, for instance, over here, 81, uh, 83. So 50 could happen. It's not out of the question. Maybe it won't happen. But right now, as it's sitting at 129, it's just not a buy for me, guys. I just can't see myself entering this one right now. And so I will avoid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.